Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. We're back with a quick in-game tactical analysis as Chelsea hosted United in a match that could be crucial for the Champions League stakes. Both managers had a chance to show how their teams are progressing, and in the end, the match ended 2-0 to United thanks to Martial and Maguire, although Chelsea were slightly ahead in the XG stakes. Without further ado, let's take a look at the tactics. A quick reminder of the formations both managers used, as Lampard stuck to his trusted 4-3-3. In response, Solskjaer opted for a 5-3-2 formation, as you can see on the One Football app. If you want to get match updates from your favorite team, as well as stats, transfers, and more, check out the One Football app, which you can get for free through the link in the description below. Let's start with how Chelsea looked to attack. Chelsea tried to play out from the back in their 4-3-3. However, often United pressed high, even off of the goal kick, with the front two marking each of Chelsea's centre-backs, whilst Bruno Fernandes was tasked with sitting on Jorginho to limit his impact. However, when deep on the build-up, Chelsea could keep their wingers high and wide to pin United's wing-backs back. This left James and Aspilicueta free at times to receive the ball and advance it up the pitch. However, Chelsea often looked to counter United's press by moving into a 4-2-3-1, with Kovacic and Jorginho as the double pivot, whilst Kante initially and soon Mount would move higher up the pitch. Both Kovacic and Jorginho are press resistant, meaning they could hold onto the ball, allowing them to play around Fernandes, and both midfielders had a large impact on the game. United's double pivot couldn't always back up the press, as Mount would have moved into this dangerous position. And additionally, both Pedro and William could come narrow, and this combined to give Jorginho and Kovacic more time on the ball. As they moved higher up the pitch, the fullbacks would push higher. United would push Juan Bissaka and Williams high on the Chelsea fullbacks, but this left a gap behind them. With the wingers having to come inside to occupy United's wide centre back, Mount in his roaming role would often make darting runs into the space left behind and either look to combine or play across into the box. We see shades of this in Giroud's disallowed goal. Fred does have a high defensive work rate and often he looked to follow Mount or whoever the midfield runner was into these wide areas whenever he could. But Chelsea's fullbacks were also willing to make themselves an attacking threat. The central midfielders could position themselves deeper, with the wingers being higher in the half spaces. This would leave the fullbacks with the space 1 versus 1 to try and get their crosses in, or beat their man before getting the cross in. The tucked in forwards often meant that they could often look to overload the box. Once Giroud came on, Chelsea went direct more often, with Mount pushing high alongside him for the knockdown, but they didn't have much luck. On the transition, United did look to take advantage of the spaces left behind by Chelsea's fullbacks, although the centre backs were often able to deal with this. Now, let's look at how United looked to attack. United also looked to play out from the back, and Chelsea also looked to press. To deal with the three centre backs, Chelsea had to bring their wingers narrow on the press. If Chelsea's fullbacks didn't back up the press, United would simply recycle the ball wide to give their fullbacks time on the ball. But often Chelsea did push their fullbacks higher up, and in these cases, Martial would often pull wide to the left to look to receive a long pass from Harry Maguire to isolate him against the centre backs, which they managed to do at times. But when Chelsea pressed high, they would often commit the entire central midfield to the press, which wouldn't have been a problem if the backline backed this up. And at times Chelsea's press did lead to some chances.
However, due to the fear of Martial and James's pace in behind, they often stayed deeper on the pitch. This left a gaping hole between defence and midfield, and Bruno Fernandes would often move into these positions. Fernandes moving into this area would often draw one of the Chelsea central midfielders, and Martial would drop deep as well, drawing a centre back and subsequently leaving space for James to run into. The positioning of the front three during this manoeuvre was fluid, making it even harder for Chelsea to track. This did lead to a couple of big chances for United. From his position in this role, Fernandes could help dictate the direction of play, as he would move wide to one side of the pitch to help create a side overload there, and to try and play in one of the wing backs to have a cross. From these defensive positions, Chelsea did look to counter-attack to Bashuai, with Pedro moving high alongside him to support him. However, the three centre-backs of United were often able to deal with this. Overall, the match was intriguing, but did show that both teams have a long way to go to be at the same level as City, Liverpool and the other teams around Europe, as they struggled to create clear-cut chances, and the match was decided by two great headers. But what do you think both teams need to improve? And what other tactics did you notice used during this match? Drop them down in the comments below. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.